In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, we're going to see if popular video blogger and massive punter Rampage Poker can finally decide to find a way to not punt off his stack. <gasps> we'll see how it goes. I have pocket fives and there's a $100 straddle on. There's an early position raised to $300. I'm in position of this guy and I make the call and we get two other players to call as well. The $50 and $100 straddle. So all right, we're playing. Nice, casual, 10, 25, 50, $100 game, $300 raise. We have some calls. We're in position with pocket fives. Let's go to the flop. Four ways I'm in position to a flop that is beautiful in 10, 3, 5, pink city for us. Action checks to me, so unfortunate that no one wants to put money in the pot, but I'm happy to do it myself. I decide to put in a value bet of $500. All right. Rampage goes for the $500 bet into the $1,235 pot. And I think this is perfectly fine and perfectly standard and perfectly reasonable. That said, this is a casual, friendly, presumably loose and splashy home game. And in games like this, I typically bet a little bit bigger in multi-way pots just to get more money in the pot when I have the nuts. I also don't do quite as much betting in multi-way pots because I think a lot of people check raise with a lot of good but non-premium hands, and that's really not what you want quite often. That said, with a hand like pocket fives, you definitely want to get money in the pot, and just betting a little bit more immediately will allow you to get in a lot more by the river. And I don't think a lot of people are going to play differently if you bet 700 versus 500. It may not seem like a big adjustment, but I definitely think it will make you a lot more money in the long run. I get one player to make the call, and the player that we just battled in last hand, he's involved, and he decides to check raise a massive one to 2,500. All right, action folds to me, and I just chopped a $40,000 pot against this opponent. Can we play another one and hopefully get some of those chips back? All right, it is worth noting, this player, the first caller has about twenty-five or $7,500. The other player is playing very deep stack. They have something like $20,000 in front of them, give or take. So in this situation, I love calling in Rampage's shoes because every once in a while, the $7,500 player is just going to put their money in because it's only $5,000 or so left. And that's clearly excellent because we have the nuts. I also think that in general, you probably do just want to call in the spot to really keep the other deep stacked opponent in. But if you do think that player's range is very tilted towards really good made hands, almost all of which you beat, and high equity draws, which all have good equity, re-raising starts to make a whole lot of sense because your hand is almost always good right now. Your opponent's probably not going to go around folding hands like even Ace-10 or King-10 in a loose, flashy live game. And if you are against one of the various draws, whether it be a straight draw or a flush draw, you don't really mind getting money in the pot immediately. So I like the call. I think it's default, but I could certainly see re-raising being ideal depending on the opponent's exact range. I decide to just make the call as it's basically just time for me to hold here, hoping to just win, see a clean run out because I want all of his bluffs to continue betting and barreling. So when I make the call, you know what's sick? The other player calls too. So Rampage says he wants to have the opponent's bluffs continue barreling. And this is where it is really important to ask yourself, does the opponent's bluffs look like jack nine of clubs for backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw and an overcard? Or do the bluffs look like seven, six of diamonds for a gut shot and a flush draw? As the draws that your opponents have have more and more equity, you don't really mind denying them that equity. But if your opponent's draws are going to be really junky draws like just a gut shot, or just two overcards, or an overcard with a backdoor flush draw, or something like that, that's when you really want to call and let them continue bluffing. So I don't know how these particular players are playing, but I think that really will stray ramp or sway Rampage's strategy one way or the other. Oh my god. This pot has ballooned up, and I guess, like I said, it's time to hold with my set. We're off to a turn, pot is massive, multi-way, and it's an offsuit four. Complete brick city. This is what I wanted to see. What I didn't want to see though, surprisingly, is that both players actually checked to me. So the check raiser didn't end up barreling a second time, but I've got to go for value. There's Rampage says it is a offsuit four. I think though it's the four clubs putting up backdoor flush draw. That is relevant if it was the four spades. That's obviously a much better card for Rampage because then he doesn't have to worry about stuff like 
jack nine of clubs that just turned to flush draw. Rampage definitely needs to bet in this situation. He wants to go for a medium size, depending on stack depths. I think something like five thousand or six thousand dollars, essentially enough to close to put the shallow stacked player all in, is probably fine. If this shallow stacked player had a stack such you could bet like four thousand, and then if he jams for eight and then the other player calls eight, then you could re-raise. That would really be ideal. But I think this player only has like six or seven thousand dollars behind. Maybe, maybe less. I don't know. It's hard to tell. And if you bet like you don't want you want to bet three, because if you bet three and he folds, then the other player is gonna be getting amazing odds with all of his draws, right? So in this spot, I think you just want to bet on the bigger side, like five or six thousand dollars, and just try to get money into the pot immediately. Plenty of stuff to get value from, top pairs, draws, just unlimited things. So I decided to size up to 4,500. It's about a half pot bet. When the board contains two flush draws, you often do want to go slightly bigger. When you don't think your opponent has any of the straights available. And right here, the opponents could have the straights, but such is life. I think I would have gone a touch bigger though, because now a flush draw is getting almost the right odds to draw. Especially if it's the backdoor flush draw, and you may get paid off fully if you improve trying to get value, just trying to get some money in, and when the first opponent folds, unfortunately, he's not gonna be involved, but he did only have like a 5k stack. What's more important is this next player with 15,000 in his stack, and he decides to go all in. Snippity snap, let's freaking go. I call with my set. Ooh, do you think that we're ever behind here? We could be. I showed immediately, it just has to be good in this spot. Unless he has 10s, then I hate my life. But I show my set, it's ahead right now, and he announces that he is on a draw. We decide to run it twice. Once again, the pot is massive. I'm happy to oblige. Rampage is happy to run it twice. But I want to know. It's how many times do you... Right there, you, I see you watching this video. How many times do you like to run it when you are playing cash games? One time, two times... Three or more times, take a second and let me know in the comment section below. I'll tell you the right strategy. The right strategy, in my opinion. If you do not go on tilt when you lose, if you are properly bankrolled to play the game that you play, and perhaps more specifically in super deep stack cash games, are you bankrolled to play the pot that you are playing? You should run it once because if you lose, you don't care and it doesn't matter because you don't go on tilt and you're properly bankrolled. And if your opponent loses, they may not be properly bankrolled and they may go on tilt. So the right answer against most people is one time. That said, if both you and your opponents are good, strong, stoic players who don't really care about the swings because you're properly bankrolled, you might as well run it more than because then you just decrease variance. No diamond, please. The river comes club, club. Club, club. Can Rampage read the board? Does he know that a lot of the draws just came in? I'm not sure he wins. <laughs> he has jack four of diamonds, and I end up holding in a massive way. Pretty sick turn. He ends up turning a pair and flush draw. But this time, this massive pot does not end up getting chopped and all of the chips end up getting scooped my way. Oh my God, I am riding such a high right now. There's so much money in here, and I'll be honest, hands were kind of shaky holding the camera, but here we are winning a massive pot that finally doesn't get chomped. Seems like some run good finally went my way. Oh, that Jack-4, that's a fun hand. Have you ever seen someone play Jack-4? It's a crazy hand, wild, interesting stuff. That's going to be it for today. Huge thanks to Rampage for letting us use this video. I actually have another video lined up for you right now featuring Rampage again and another very popular video blogger, Mariano. Make sure you check that out. If you enjoyed this fun hand, click the like and subscribe button down below. Click the notification bell. Thank you for being here. Good luck in your games. Have fun. And when you get it all in with a set and half the draws come in, I hope you still manage to win.